God, come to my assistance. Lord, make to help me. Glory to, to the Father and to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever.
Glory to 
Whatever you do, work at it with your whole being. Do it for the Lord rather than for men, since you know full well that you will receive an inheritance from him as your reward. Be slaves of Christ the Lord. Archbishop Chapu, our Metropolitan, thank you for the honor of your presence this evening and for your willingness to preside at this solemn celebration of the Church's evening prayer. My brother bishops, priests, deacons, vowed religious and lay faithful, all brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for your presence this evening as we join together in the prayer of the church. It is more than fitting and good that we should do this. It is necessary for us to lift up our minds and our hearts to God in praise, thanksgiving, and petition on the eve of the beginning of my ministry as the 11th Bishop of the Diocese of Harrisburg. Tonight, we give glory to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we entrust this new beginning and every moment of this journey, now commencing, into the love and providence of our all-caring God. We remember with undimmed affection and prayerful intercession your beloved shepherd, Joseph McFadden. And as we hold his memory dear, we beg that God in his mercy, that perpetual light may shine upon him. We do this especially on the eve of the feast of his baptismal patron saint. Through the intercession of Saint Joseph, may Bishop McFadden rest in peace. Some time ago, a good friend sent me a cartoon from the comic strip Peanuts. The cartoon featured Spike, Snoopy's older brother, always pictured with hat and whiskers, who lives alone in the California desert and often talks to a cactus. In this particular cartoon, Spike was telling a cactus that he had decided to become a shepherd. And he was writing a letter ordering a dozen sheep to begin his new career. In the final panel of the cartoon, Spike concludes his letter, and by the way, please send a book of instructions. (laughs) Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be great if there were such a guidebook, a set of instructions, not only for tending sheep on the hillsides, but for the awesome responsibilities of those who are called to participate in the work of the Good Shepherd. Such a book of instructions would truly be a dream come true. However, much like every other weighty responsibility that rests on human relationships with others, like marriage, like parenting, shepherding has no infallible guidebook. Instead, in marriage, 
in parenting, in shepherding the people of God. We rely on the grace of God and through prayer, reflection, discernment, and sincere collaboration, we shepherd and the shepherd and flock together seek to know God's will, to embrace it willingly, and to fulfill it faithfully. This is the journey that begins tomorrow in this new chapter of the history of the Harrisburg Diocese. And this is why it is good and it is necessary that we pray fervently together this evening and always. The precious book that has been handed down to us from apostolic times, inspired by God the Holy Spirit, reveals the history of our salvation and the times, the places, and the people God chose in the unfolding of his saving plan. With this celebration of evening prayer, we begin the annual feast of a most extraordinary man who was chosen by God to be spouse to the mother of God and foster father to the incarnate son. This evening and tomorrow at the mass of installation, we will have the joy of reflecting a little on the life of St. Joseph and the unexpected twists and turns through which St. Joseph faithfully and obediently served God's purposes. When St. Joseph learned that his espoused beloved, Mary, is with child, he must assume that Mary has broken their engagement, that Mary has been unfaithful, and that in accord with the law, he must dismiss her. According to that law, Joseph seemed to have two choices. He could initiate a public legal action against Mary for her presumed infidelity by bringing her before the court. Or he could, according to the law, give her a private writ of divorce. Not willing to put Mary to shame, or perhaps even to death, Joseph decides on the quiet private action. St. Matthew, who under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit narrates the situation, interprets Joseph's choice as an indication that Joseph was a just man. This designation a just man must be seen to extend far beyond this one particular decision with regard to Mary. Everything we are told about Joseph in the Gospels indicates that he was indeed a just man. This primary attribute of Saint Joseph, that of being just or righteous, gives us not only an overall appreciation of who he was, but it also aligns Joseph with the greatest figures of the Old Testament. The biblical concept of a whole life lived in obedience to the word of God can be summed up in this one single idea, a just man. The second psalm that we have just prayed, Psalm 146, calls out to our soul to give praise to the Lord, to praise the Lord all our days. And the psalmist reminded us that it is the Lord who loves the just and thwarts the path of the wicked. Because of this close communion with the word of God, the just person knows that God's will is not law imposed on us from without, but rather the law 
is joy. The law is good news because the just person hears it with a loving openness to the one who gave the law. And the just person is able to understand and live it from within. Law and love are not opposed, but in the life of the just person, they are brought into a living unity. It is this profound trust in God, in God's word, in God's will, that the just one abides in hope, despite surrounding circumstances. And so it is that even at the hour of his greatest trial, at the moment that he must have been at his greatest disappointment, Joseph, the just man, wishes Mary well and refuses to take revenge or retaliation. As the psalmist exhorted us, he is happy whose hope is in the Lord. The biblical figure of St. Joseph provides us this evening with a rich reflection on our own lives, our lives as members of the Christian faithful in our various ministries, apostolates, and responsibilities to which God has called each of us. The example of St. Joseph demonstrates for us what is essential to grow to enjoy a greater communion with the word of God through prayer, reflection, and most especially by an active and full participation in the church's liturgy, to grow to understand and appreciate that law and love are not contradictory or even in conflict, but must be brought into an effective unity and above all to trust in God, even at the most difficult twists and turns that our lives may take. These are essential lessons, essential lessons which God gives us through the witness of St. Joseph. His life is an instruction on how to shepherd, how to minister, how to be a spouse, to be a parent, to be, fruit, to be in a fruitful servant relationship with God and with all others. The life of St. Joseph also exemplifies the truth which St. Paul teaches in this evening's scripture passage from the letter to the Colossians. Paul told the Christian community at Colossae, whatever you do, work at it with your whole being. Do it for the Lord rather than for men, since you know full well you will receive an inheritance from him as your reward. Be slaves of Christ the Lord. How wonderfully St. Joseph puts flesh on that Pauline instruction. How easy it would have been for Joseph, how easy it is for us sometimes, to say, this is my business. I'll deal with it my way. I'll do with it what I like. But he did not say that. Joseph did not act that way, nor must we. Joseph invites us to understand and live the truth that this, the church, our involvement, our preaching of the gospel, our living of the truth, this is God's business. And he has put us in charge of it and we are responsible to the Lord. Paul invites us to see ourselves as slaves of Christ the Lord. Are we willing to be living tools, instruments that God can use 
in the work of evangelization and in the unfolding of his loving, saving plan for humanity, are we willing? Under Roman law, slaves had no right to own property, no rights of inheritance. And yet here in this passage, Paul promises an inheritance to those who work for the Lord with their whole being, an inheritance that is nothing less than the inheritance of heaven. As we begin this new time together, let us resolve that by God's grace and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we will work together for the Lord with our whole being. And let us keep our hope firm. Let us keep our hope unshaken by any circumstances as we keep our hearts set on our eternal inheritance. May St. Joseph, the just man, intercede for us and for the whole church.
My dear brothers and sisters, all fatherhood in heaven and on earth has its origin in God. Let us turn to him and pray. God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginning you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good evening. I'm Father Robert Gillen, the diocesan administrator, and I too would like to uh, reiterate the opening words of uh, Bishop Gaynor in his homily, and on behalf of the Diocese of Harrisburg, thank Archbishop Chaput for being here this evening, for presiding, for helping us to lift our minds and our hearts in prayer on this 
beautiful and important occasion. So thank you very much, Archbishop, for being with us this thank evening. Thank you, Father. I also want to thank Bishop Gaynor f for being our homilist this evening. You know, we haven't even installed him yet, and we have put him to work. So thank you, Bishop Gaynor. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Father Quinlan, pastor of Holy Name of Jesus Parish, Father Wilkie, the parochial vicar, deacons and religious, parish and diocesan staff, and the volunteers for their tremendous hospitality this evening. Also, thank you to the choir and our servers who always do such a fine job. And yes, we can give them a round of applause too. And to all the faithful, to our visiting bishops and clergy, laity, papal honorees and members of ecclesiastical orders, and to all visitors, thank you for your prayerful presence here this evening as we thank God for the gift of St. Joseph and Bishop Gaynor and the fellowship we share with them both in Christ. Let us continue to pray that as St. Joseph watched over the household of Mary and Jesus, so Bishop Gaynor may be given the abundant graces to watch over his new household as that wise and faithful servant. And now please know that following the Vesper service, uh, a reception has been prepared for you. A ves the reception is in the former church, which is that way. And <laughs> if you don't know how to get there, just ask one of our greeters and they will point you in the right direction or just follow the crowd. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. See Mrs. Gaynor. Okay. 
congratulations to you and your Thank family. You. Thank you. God bless you too. You see you so tomorrow, much. okay? Yes, okay. I will. Are you the bishop's sister? No, I'm friends. Oh, my mom, Stanny Bergen from Hill City, South oh, Dakota. I, I sent you an sure. email today. Sure, she yes. sends her greetings and Father you. Brian Lane. Thank you so much. God bless, God bless you. you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bishop. Very nicely done. Thank very you. nicely done. Thank you so much. Congratulations. You have a beautiful mother. Well, I stopped yeah, to say hello you, to her. Did you? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, everybody wants to talk to you, so I'll get out of your way. Well,